Hi, and welcome to the Awesome Dynamic Show. This is Paul DeWarian, the president and owner of Awesome Dynamic. With me today, I have two of our Amazon consultants. One is Tim DeWarian, my brother and also very knowledgeable in Amazon. And also Blake Tintori. Uh, he is, is coming to us. They're both actually in the Chicagoland area this time, which is uh, an oddity because Blake and I are usually hanging out in the Florida area. Anyway, uh, as you know, uh, or as you may be finding out now, the purpose of the uh, awesome dynamic webinar is to demonstrate our value and knowledge uh, by answering your questions. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask uh, throughout this uh, webinar, please use the place on the right side of your screen to answer or ask the different questions that we can then answer. Uh, otherwise, we will just go ahead and jump right into the forums and see if we have some questions that we can answer for folks there. Tim, you want to take it away? Absolutely, Paul. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're going to pull up a couple of forum questions and answers. And uh, let's go ahead and start with, if it'll switch for me, let's start with this first one. So the first one is going to be, uh, do you sell our prints? How do you package for FBA? So this person is talking about uh, these prints that he sells that are eight and a half by 11. Uh, and uh, they're printed in cardstock. He puts them into a clear cello sleeve and then a thick mailer in an envelope. Um, he basically just wants to make sure uh, that it's able to uh, be sent through FBA if it's prepped well enough to be able to send to F be sent to FBA. Uh, my initial reaction to this is that you can never overprotect a product. And one thing that you need to know is that when you do protect or when you do prep a product, you have to know that Amazon isn't going to really give you any additional protection beyond what you do when it gets shipped to the customer. So uh, I think that's a really important takeaway from this particular one. Uh, did you guys want to add anything to that, Blake or Paul? Uh, it, it, art does seem interesting because I can see how he's probably worried about a canvas. So yeah, I don't think you can be overprotective here. Uh, it seems that being safe than sorry is definitely the case you want to take here. Yeah, even even this other seller says, you know, pack accordingly. Uh, your items will be handled quickly and moved a lot, and when purchased, tossed in a box of whatever else the customer bought. So it's a very good point to make sure that uh, your product is able to be survive that whole process. All right. Great. Let's move on to the next question. The next one is going to be uh, they have a product, but no UPC barcode. I purchase clothing in bulk from a wholesaler who does not have UPC codes on their products. I'm a new business and really can't afford to purchase this. Does anyone have any suggestions? So, uh, there's a little bit of back and forth and basically saying, uh, you know, the only ways to be able to get around this is that, uh, if you do purchase in bulk from a wholesaler, uh, they should have UPCs for the products already. If they don't, you either have to get UPCs for the products or you have to apply for brand registry and get a UPC exemption. Uh, the big problem is that with a UPC exemption is that you have to have the product branded and you still have to have some kind of unique identifier on the outside of the box uh, when you, if you decide to use FBA. But uh, yeah, those are really the two ways. One person did say, hey, you know, you can buy 500 UPCs on eBay for like 10 bucks. But uh, another seller did chime in here and said, Amazon is really, really careful about uh, people who use resold barcodes. You really need to get your barcodes directly from GS1. And I know that's not uh, an inexpensive proposition, but uh, if you want to sell on Amazon, that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, anyone else want to chime in on this? Uh, no, that's pretty standard, straightforward. Uh, purchase UPCs. Uh, highly suggest GS1. And uh, yeah. It's interesting that they're getting a bunch of, uh, was it unbranded too? Is that what it said? So it was just a bunch uh, of... That was the question. I don't think the seller ever actually answered that. They just oh, said they're buying in bulk from a wholesaler. So if they're unbranded, um, then, you know, and they want to brand it themselves, themselves, then yes, I can see them getting the whole brand registry thing, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother kit and caboodle trying to get that uh, all fi figured out and situated. Right. Yeah, get some UPCs. Yeah, get some UPCs. Don't get them from a reseller like eBay or uh, Nationwide Barcodes. There was one of these other places. Amazon has been systematically uh, preventing sellers from using those barcodes. And uh, we don't want you to 
be in a situation where you all of a sudden uh, are, have a listing that you can't use at all after spending all this time and money getting them up and running. All right. Next question. Uh, this is an FBA shipping question. This one says, can I fill 20 cases? Uh, and I think this meant to say in one case when sending product to FBA. So basically, uh, they ran into a situation where they had downloaded, I'm sorry, I, I had downloaded the image that they said. Let me just pull this up really quick here. Basically, they have several units that they want to ship in, but the problem is that uh, Amazon is uh, wanting to split the shipment up into many different shipments. Uh, you can see here where there's a total of 240 units, uh, and he wants to see if he can do 240 units in one case as opposed to 12 cases of 20 units, uh, sorry, uh, 12 units in 20 cases instead to prevent Amazon from splitting them up. Uh, while we do recommend that you can change around your case packs, one thing to keep in mind is that Amazon does say that uh, the case pack limit is 150 units. And I did verify this today when I was uh, going through the, when I was uh, researching this uh, topic. So a uh, quick answer to that one is no, you can't repack it that way. However, you could repack, let's say 120 in two cases, or over two cases, and that might help you reduce the number of places that you're being sent to. But uh, short answer is no, you can't uh, do it exactly how you did it before, in, in here, in this example. All right. Anyone want to follow up on that one? Uh, no, I, I actually learned something new. I didn't know the 150 limit. Good to know. Yeah, I, I didn't for... know about that either. <laughs> At first, I I uh, actually saw that uh, someone else said um, that specifically in here. It says your case pass cannot contain more than 150 units. So I followed up on that, and sure enough, it uh, that was the case. So ha, there was a case with case packs. All right, <laughs> great. Let's do a couple more forum questions, and then we're—I think—we'll take a little break here and talk about awesome dynamic. Uh, this next one is uh, about some changes to, uh, or, or some frustrations that people are having. Oops, that helps if I click the wrong thing. Sorry, I don't click the wrong thing. Okay, so looks like some sellers are really starting to have a lot of frustrations with getting feedback removed. And uh, I don't want to go through this whole novel of a post right here, but essentially what they're saying is that uh, Amazon has been doing two big things recently whenever someone is doing uh, a feedback removal. One is they are essentially giving a cookie cutter template response now saying that they are going to send this uh, inquiry over to the team that deals with these and uh, they aren't necessarily taking care of some of these easy feedback removals right away. And I think we have experienced that once or twice already. I don't know if anyone uh, can chime into that fact. I certainly can, Tim. So this is something where uh, we've actually been experiencing that with a number of our clients. And um, yeah, they're, they're getting a little bit more templatized in terms of their answers. And just as everything we do in Amazon, patience and persistence wins out at the end of the day. Uh, like I always tell our uh, clients, you know, 99% of the time we get exactly what we want but you just got to be patient and persistent to get there. So if that means following up on that uh, feedback removal request uh, and, and just continue to push and push and push every single day for the next six weeks, then that's what you need to do. Uh, sometimes that's the only way to pursue it. Uh, so you know what? And I don't think you're going to have to do that for six weeks on this, but a lot of people just give up. Uh, that's usually what we hear all the time. People just, you know, push towards it or they say, um, you know, what else do I do? Just just keep pushing uh, politely, but continue to be patient and persistent in asking for that feedback removal. Uh, continue to ask why. Continue to ask them to give additional reasons. Uh, continue to say, you know, because of the reasons that they gave you uh, and the policy that you quote them and copy and paste and provide links to, um, that it definitely should be removed and you don't understand why this clear violation of the policy um, doesn't uh, warrant that feedback for removal. So again, it's just being patient, persistent, continuing to push and push. Don't let the case close. Uh, continue to keep it open and continue to push. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, that's a great, 
great explanation of how sometimes these changes the Amazon implement just uh, uh, make things a little bit more difficult, but uh, usually we find a way to get around those. All right, next question is going to be uh, account got suspended. Let me open it up here. All right, so they said their account gets suspended and uh, after only a few days and that they're in a, a real big mess here. So again, I don't want to go through this whole diatribe of exactly what happened, but essentially this seller uh, opened up an account. Uh, they had issues trying to get through their initial, uh, I think they call it staging now, where they're trying to verify that a seller is uh, legitimate and that they have uh, all the information in order before they allow you to start selling. And what happened is instead of continuing to go through this process, this uh, seller got really frustrated and therefore he called seller support and seller support recommended to him to open another account. And Ooh. I think, <laughs> so I think you can pretty much imagine what happened at that point. Um, that second account got suspended, uh, basically saying that you opened up a duplicate account and uh, now he's in all sorts of trouble and trying to figure out what to do from here. So I'm going to let one of you two guys, whoever wants to, to, to talk a little bit about this. Paul's waving his hand over here. So let me, <laughs> let me hand it over to you. I got this one. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's just amazing sometimes the tier one support people, when you call Amazon, don't know their own policies. Uh, opening a second account without having prior authorization to do so can definitely land you in a, in a pretty bad place. Um, if you have a contact at the inside of Amazon, which we at Awesome Dynamic do, um, we can actually connect with uh, Amazon Business Development uh, personnel that can grant authorization for a second account and actually can help through some of these different issues too. But yeah, um, sometimes you can't take what the first person says at Amazon as face value um, or what they say as a final answer. Uh, sometimes you'll get some messages from Amazon that say yeah, that is their final answer and it will not change and they won't contact you anymore. Uh, that's, that's, that's something that um, I, I just, don't believe that so we continue to push until we get what we want so in this case yeah opening the second account definitely a bad idea um you definitely need to continue to push uh you know seller performance probably in this case depending on who you're communicating with and just again patience and persistence every day uh yep. following up uh i i don't know the the whole background on it or what uh, caused the account to get suspended in the first place uh but you whatever it is you have to make your case uh, you have to first off be positive, be polite. Um, don't get angry or upset or let that sort of permeate through your communications to them because that's not going to get anybody to want to help you. Uh, you want to make your case and be very detailed about it. And we talked about this last week about a different situation, but you need to connect all the dots and present all the evidence. Don't uh, skimp anywhere. So if, if, it's a, if it's an issue where they don't believe that you have a genuine product, you want to produce uh, documents that prove it, signed by the people who own those companies, and uh, really, really build a case. Think of it as like a court case. What would, um, what would an attorney do to get all the evidence together to a greatly detailed degree and get you know this binder full of information together in an electronic form as PDFs and send it to them and say, look, I present my whole case. Here it is. A lot of people, they just get frustrated. They start lashing out at Amazon in ways that they probably shouldn't. Um, and when they're submitting evidence, they don't really put much time or effort into presenting that evidence. Think of it like a term paper in college or um, yeah, evidence, references, really getting into the details and in, in, in putting um, proof behind the different claims that you're making and uh, you know, laying out different steps as to how you're going to address the issue. So depending on the reason for the suspension, you really want to go the extra mile to really prove that you deserve to have your account unsuspended because they are the judge and jury. Tim Blake, you have anything to add to that? No, that was that was pretty good. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think I'm good here. Thank you so much, Paul. I knew that uh, you would definitely want to chime in on this particular one because it's uh, something that we've encountered several times and something that uh, I think a lot of sellers just uh, don't read the fine print when they sign up for a seller account, and you know that's why we 
you know, we are here. That's why we exist. So, right. all right. Then, uh, Paul, before we move on to anything else, do you want to do uh, a little review of uh, Awesome Dynamic? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. So let's pull up the website, shall we? If you go to awesomedynamic.com, and you can check out our website. And on that website, we have fabulous services such as Amazon Account Management, Amazon Seller Consulting, Search Engine Optimization, and Website Design. And these are the, the, the services that we offer. Uh, the fastest growing portion of our business is the Amazon consulting and management side. Uh, you could certainly dive into the different areas of the site, but I want to tell you about some more exciting things. First, if you want to watch any of these webinars in the past, there's a webinars link at the top of the page. You can find all our past webinars. Uh, we actually dive into some really great uh, topics, uh, which we try and do every you know, month or so. You know, What are all the different factors that go into winning the buy box or exactly what should I be doing for labeling my FBA products? Or um, what, what exactly goes into ranking uh, your product well on Amazon? Or what does optimizing a listing really mean? So all those different things we, yeah, Tim does it, Tim and Phil and Blake uh, have done a great job putting together in-depth presentations on those topics. You can either find those in the webinar section or if you go to the top of the page, there is a blog section where we're putting out blogs on these topics too with videos. So really in-depth, valuable information on all things Amazon and SEO uh, in our blog. While you're there on the left side, you'll see you can join the awesome list. You just pop your email in and we'll email you whenever we have a new piece of content come out uh, or our next webinar, which by the way, happens to be every Thursday at 1230 Central. So if you wanna pop in and ask us questions live while we're broadcasting, you can certainly do that by joining our webinar every single week, except for I think Thanksgiving and during the uh, end of December. Uh, if you found this information valuable, we would certainly appreciate a five-star review from you. If you hop all the way down on the bottom of the screen, you'll see that there is a review us button. When you press that, you're gonna give us a thumbs up. And when you do, please give us five stars on either Google or Facebook. We would really appreciate that uh, as a thank you for the information I give you, giving you on this webinar. And of course, if you want to contact us to get involved and get started with Awesome Dynamic to help you with any of your, let's say, account suspension issues or increasing revenues and profits on Amazon, optimizing your listings, winning the buy box and all these other things that you could research on your own, but you just want someone to take care of it because that's what we do. Uh, give us a call at 800-238-1811. Again, that's 800-238-1811. Or you can press that little free quote button. That'll get you in touch. Either one will get you in touch with Terry Levin, our director of sales, and he'll get you set up with a, uh, a quote on exactly what we could do for you. And then we can get started with one of our experts to get going. And with that being said, Tim, let's hop into the next question, shall we? Absolutely. Sounds good to me. All right, I think Blake, this would be one right up your alley here. So I think I'll I'll probably have you feel this one. So, uh, hello, I'm getting ready to send in uh, my second FBA shipment. They have ten different items, about ten to twenty of each item. Uh, they're small and uh, poly bubble bagged. The only thing that's really on the outside of the bags is just the FBA label. But since there's uh, ten different items. Uh, the, this person is really concerned about an Amazon associate uh, incorrectly receiving the inventory when they uh, are sent to the FBA warehouse. So uh, they sent a picture. Uh, I think the picture kind of illustrates this really well. So he basically says, hey, you know, this is what they look like. They all just have their own separate FN SKU labels. Um, and he just wants to know is should he just throw them all into one box and send them in like this? Uh, or should he try to bundle them together some way? Um, I mean, I have, I have a couple ideas, but if you if you want to start either way, Tim, sure. we'll jump in with your idea first, and we'll see if Blake thinks uh, thinks your idea is as good as his. <laughs> Sounds good to me. All right, so my first concern is that yeah, you got to think. You know, let's try to make the FBA associates job as easy as possible. Um, one other seller said, "Hey, yes, while this is certainly, uh." okay to do in terms of policies uh you might have a lazy f you know amazon associate who decides to scan one of them then count all of them because they all pretty much look the same and say like okay i just received uh 
200 of this one FN SKU, which then doesn't match up with uh, what you had uh, uh, sent in. So one recommendation that I have is to case pack these. You know, put them into smaller cases with just the items that are all like, and then uh, send them in that way. Or have some kind of indicator, some kind of um, label on the outside of each package that better identifies or better uniquely shows that they are different items. Uh, so those are two ideas I had. What about you, Blake? Did you have any ideas? Well, I... I mean, are they, I don't even know if the check-in people are allowed to kind of say, oh, there's 12 here. I, th I think they have to actually go box to box if I'm not mistaken. But because um, typically when we send stuff in, I mean, we have a lot of stuff going in, but nothing really goes in case packs. And it is definitely something I think we can, on our side, implement. Uh, on one business side, another client I work with, they definitely heavily do that. But I mean, I would have found a smaller box or put some paper and some puffing in there, but my deep down feeling is Amazon would be, yeah, they're fine with that and I'll send it in. <laughs> I don't even know if I would case pack something like that small, um, but I don't know, and you can probably tell me what the benefit of that is, but if, for example, Amazon does scan every box regardless if they think it's the same item or not. Well, the one the one advantage to do in the case pack, if, if you're really looking to avoid having your product split up amongst a whole bunch of warehouses, a bunch of the same product, you can have a case of 37 items. It doesn't have to be however it comes from China or a certain amount in the case. You can say, Okay, I'm putting all these in a box that's perfectly sized for this, and I'm gonna say there's you know 37 of these in one case that's this size, and it doesn't have to be the same size case or the same quantity or the same weight uh, for your next FBA shipment. So there is certainly a uh, an advantage to limiting the number of places they want you to send the product if you go in that manner. Uh, Tim, you want to jump into the next question? Absolutely. All right, uh, here's another FBA question. Open this guy up. All right, so this person is doing small parcel delivery, and he says that the boxes that he's using are over 25 inches on one of the sides. Uh, so he says, you know, it's not worthwhile for him to do a full, or for to doing LTL or FTL to ship in through freight. Uh, so uh, he needs to know how does he solve this. So... This is where we start to get into some of those scenarios where it is okay for you to send in boxes that are larger than 25 inches, but Amazon is very, very specific. That can only be for oversized items, and basically it's uh, each uh, unit would be shipped individually in those uh, shipping boxes. So each, if you have a shipment that needs to go in, uh, each unit needs to be in its own shipping box. Uh, and th that that is oversized. So I want to kind of uh, remind everyone to make sure that they do read through all of Amazon's shipping policies in detail uh, before they start shipping this stuff in. Because if you do run into a situation where you uh, don't adhere to Amazon's packing and shipping policies, that could be anything from a slap on the wrist to a suspension of your ability to be able to send into FBA and even a suspension of your account if it becomes a really severe problem. So it's very important to make sure you adhere to those uh, guidelines. Yeah, another comment I want to make there, we had a client that, we have a client that uh, sells um, foam mattresses on Amazon. And uh, they had the, 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 the dimensions of the box were such that you could only fit three on a pallet. And I challenged them to go back to their manufacturer to see if they could reduce one of the dimensions of the box that this rolled mattress, foam mattress, uh, went into uh, to be a little bit smaller so we could double the amount of capacity on the pallet. Because literally, if they could shave, it was like an inch or two off of one of the dimensions of the box, it would uh, allow them to send on double the amount of product per pallet. So instead of three, six mattresses per pallet. 
Um, and they were able to do it. They didn't think they would, but uh, hey, if you don't ask the question, you won't know. So uh, they did ask the question and their manufacturer did work with them to get that done. So that was a, su a success story, but it, it was all, in efforts to match the specific dimensions al allowed by Amazon. Uh, and that's what kind of prompted that, uh, that discussion and that action. So I figured I'd kind of throw that in there as, a, as an aside that was related to this. Absolutely. Tim, you wanna hop into the next question? Yeah, we have uh, two questions that are about LTL. So I thought we could cover those. Ah. The, first one, <laughs> the first one here is the use of plastic plat pallets. Uh, this person says that their uh, vendor has a correct size pallet, the 40 by 48, but uh, they basically said uh, they use plastic pallets. Is that okay? And uh, Amazon is very, very specific that they only uh, accept treated wooden pallets uh, that are, I think, GMA standard. So that's uh, one of those things that you want to make sure you adhere, again, to Amazon's policies. And yes, if I were you, I would repack those onto wooden pallets instead of the plastic ones. Um, Excellent. And then the next one is going to be about uh, the check-in process with uh, LTL. Uh, this person says that they were using uh, Central Freight to ship in with LTL. That went really quick. And now they're starting to use UPS Freight to ship in. And now they said that a shipment that they sent uh, on the 8th of this month is still not checked in as of uh, when was this post made yesterday. So uh, they want to know what the heck is going on. Um, the first question I have for you is, are either of these Amazon's partnered carrier or are you actually using your own carrier to check these in? Amazon will oftentimes prioritize their own partnered carriers over a third party carrier that you arrange. Uh, in addition to that, if you are able to uh, do a f an FTL shipment, so fill a full truck, we have found that oftentimes those also get prioritized and checked in much quicker. But it's not unusual at all for it to take two, three, sometimes even four weeks to be able to check in an LTL shipment from the time that they uh, they received it. So, you know, patience is really needed here. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. All right. I have a couple more. If we want to do two more, I have them here. Um, yeah, let's, let's do it. Perfect. Let's... All right. Weight handling fees. We always love talking about uh, FBA fees. Uh, so basically this person says that uh, they have uh, these items that are under a pound, but for some reason Amazon is saying that uh, they weigh between two and four pounds and therefore getting charged an additional fee. Uh, so they want to know why the heck this is happening and how we can fix it. Uh, really quick answer to this one, Cubiscan. That's my new favorite word is Cubiscan. <sighs> Cubiscan. Cubiscan. Yes. Cubiscan. Yeah, so uh, I know that uh, I, was it you, Blake, who uh, recently uh, had communication with Amazon for one of our clients that uh, you requested a bunch of Cuba scans uh, for it. That was not me, but that sounds cool. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is a, great. So it's uh, a Cuba scan is a really cool device that basically you set it on there and it uses lasers and all sorts of high technology to be able to uh, measure the product in an instant as well as weigh it. And it can even do that on a conveyor belt as it's going across uh, in, a, in a conveyor belt system. So what you can do is you can oftentimes request Amazon uh, do a Cuba scan. So that basically ask them to pull a unit off of the shelf, run it through the Cuba scan, which is very accurate and will remeasure. And Amazon will then update your uh, product or your packaging dimensions on Amazon and charge you the right fees. The other thing that Amazon will oftentimes do is that if you have been charged a higher fee for a long time and uh, they will actually, if you ask for it, they may be able to reimburse you for all those sales that you made at that higher FBA price. Uh, I have heard other sellers do that successfully, and I have done that uh, a couple times in the past when this was a really big impact on uh, a, a client's bottom line. Awesome. Thank you, That's Tim. That's really powerful stuff, yes. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, I just, I just wanted to wrap up here. Um, yep. The... 
the idea here is we're here to answer people's questions. And um, we, we're actually sending a link to this webinar to the folks that we're talking about in this webinar. And I actually got uh, a few neat responses uh, from last week. So somebody said, hey, cool, I just watched it. Thank you so much. It helped me clear things up for me. Uh, I'm still gathering details on how to use FBA and if it would be appropriate for me. Very cool show, by the way. And that was by Nate uh, that we covered last week with the question. So. Like I said, if you're watching this and you, you want us to not randomly select you from the forum and answer your question, and if you want to hop right into our webinar, it's every uh, every Thursday at 1230 Central Time, you can hop on over to the Awesome Dynamic website at awesomedynamic.com. Click on webinars, and there's a little link there that you can register for the webinar and join us with any questions that you have. Uh, remember, if you need help with any of this stuff and you want to uh, engage with us to help fix any of these issues for you, uh, we do have two options. One is we can consult with you and just teach you, uh, teach you how to do this stuff. We we have no problem with doing that for you. And uh, the other way that we can work with you is to take over your account and run it for you. Uh, then we just have our, our folks and our, uh, our team uh, run your entire account. And that's something that a lot of our clients like because then they can just sit back and relax um, while we, uh, we make recommendations, uh, improve, uh, improve the different uh, listings that are on there, do the photography for you, do the copywriting, run your pay-per-click campaigns, work with our internal Amazon contacts to find new opportunities, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if you'd like to reach out to us, the way to do that is come to the awesomedynamic.com website, click on the free quote button, or you can call us at 800-238-1811. Again, that's 800-238-1811. And thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care.